Hi everyone, welcome to week three. Good class today. Um, this week we're gonna focus on photographing our work. So we've been doing these viewer profiles um, and research, definitely keep doing that. It's really super valuable and super important. You have to have an audience for your portfolio in mind in order to make the design choices. How do you present that portfolio? Imagine uh, you know, a website for a CIA agent, a website for a tattoo artist. They should look pretty different. One should clearly have a clean government agent organized information quality to it. Another should have a much more organic, uh, tactile, corporeal quality to it. If you think about it, different as those two jobs are, they both are, in a loose sense, conveying information. They're both communications kinds of things, but they're pretty different and they should feel different. Before I read a word, I should have a feeling of what I'm looking at. And to do that, you need to know who your audience is, what you're trying to communicate to them. So keep going and sort those ideas out. And then let's move on to photographing our work. So a couple of you might have nice cameras, mirrorless, DSLR, and so on. That's awesome. Um, it's worth getting one one of these days when you have some money, but that might be a while. Uh, but if you have to use your phone, that's fine. Phones are great. Um, we do have a web page that has some information on photographing your work, uh, butterfly lighting, putting a painting in shade if you have to, and so on. So I'll link the page and you can go take a look at that information. Um, you know, the cleanest, clearest, sharpest image of your work you can get would be the best. Um, but let me say a word also about if you, let's say, design a salsa label in Illustrator or Photoshop or some piece of software like that. So you have, um, you have a, you know, a 2D file that you could simply slide over from wherever, where, however you designed it to uh, your website. That's okay. That's a decent way to show some graphic design. Um, but it's not the best. If you print that label out, uh, assuming it, you know, assuming that this is not a product that's been made, if it's actually been made, then great, have them send you some jars of the salsa. But if it hasn't been made, if you designed it on spec or for a class or whatever, then print the label out, go buy some jars of salsa, and, uh, you know, glue it on a jar. Take a picture of that jar. That's better than just a 2D transfer of the file. Um, but while you're at it, go a step further. Go to the market and look at different jars of salsa. What, they're all saying different things, right? It's, it's, it's a similar stuff inside, but they're pitched to different audiences. Who are you trying to communicate with? When we're gonna write captions for these photos in a couple of weeks, when you caption the photo, you really wanna contextualize who you were trying to talk to, how you were trying to communicate to them, you know, what the message was. You have a, a design client who you're working for and you've made choices to help them speak to their audience. Explain why you made design choices and what you were trying to accomplish with them. Um, but also, so the, the jar of mocked up salsa is better than just seeing the 2D label and go a step further. Put it on a table. Put some salsa in a bowl, put some chips there. All of those extras are not your label design per se, but they're contextualizing your label. Ultimately, your label isn't proving that you can make a rectangle in Illustrator. Your label is demonstrating that you can use graphic communication to, to say something. If I look at the photo of your label on a jar with some chips and with some salsa and I'm hungry, you've succeeded. So if you think of those kinds of things, and again, you know, we work in many media in this class. Some of you are painters, you might have ceramic work, et cetera, et cetera. But, you know, just as using an example, contextualizing that, 
if you know if you make ceramics and they're functional then show them in a functional context um, try not to make your audience do too much work demonstrate what's going on so that's our mission this week is to photograph our work uh, for some of you it will be also a chore of digging up work what have I actually done and where is it uh, is it buried somewhere is it at my parents home in Sacramento um, but you know our mission should be to finish this semester with a dozen pieces of relevant work on your website if it's two dozen then that's awesome that's even better but you know it should be more than two a dozen would be really great so if you uh, don't have a dozen then our mission is both to photograph what we do have but it's also to make a plan you know today is February 1st how by May 1st March April May that's three months um, how by May for yeah <laughs> how by May 1st am I gonna have a dozen pieces make that happen that's really important um, to you know you being in a position to present yourself to the world and try to get exhibits in a gallery get commissioned to do an illustration get hired by an organization whatever the goal is so um, again I'll link to the web page that has some more details on technical stuff about photographing your work but do that and use the best camera you have access to again don't sweat it if it's a phone that's perfectly fine that's what most of you are going to use but um, take some great images and so last week we made menus so start distributing the images that you create this week on the pages that correlate with the different subheadings of your area as always shoot me an email if you have questions um, and there we go okay let me say another quick word or two about networking research viewer profiles um, as artists and people who often kind of shun uh, the idea of marketing or maybe a little bit as introverts many of us you know we're not crazy about this but imagine you know before the pandemic you're on campus and somebody says how do I get to Brotman Hall so you very happily explain to this person how to go from FA1 to Brotman Hall uh, you're happy to do it they say thank you they walk away you don't say hey it's taken me a long time to earn this GIS right how to get to Brotman Hall isn't just oh go here go here it's a GIS it's a geographic information system these are things that people invest time and money in and you've got one in your brain because you've walked around the campus a bunch of times you don't complain about giving it away for free you're happy to share your world with a newcomer who doesn't know everything about your world so that's all we're doing when we reach out to people and ask to talk about their careers ask for a little information interview super easy on something like zoom so don't be embarrassed to ask for a little information again you know you could say hey can I if it was not a pandemic I might say can I buy you a cup of coffee and talk about your career um, you know I'm really fascinated by all this wonderful work that you've done it's so much easier and ask than when you have to ask somebody to hire you you just want 15 minutes to talk about how awesome they are uh, you know send out 20 or 50 or 100 emails if that's what it takes to get 10 interviews but connect to people that's your career that's what you're doing it's as important as any skill you develop in the School of Art um, so I, you know I think I would say can I buy you a virtual cup of coffee even though these people have been on a zillion zoom meetings maybe nobody's ever said can I buy you a virtual cup of coffee what does that even mean they might say yes just because they're curious what that means what does it mean well I don't know I, I'm, I'm not sure but you can come up with what it means um, you know it might mean maybe it just means a zoom meeting that's all bring your own cup of coffee or maybe you send them a ten dollar Starbucks gift card or maybe you 
send you design a nice little form and they get to check would they like your virtual cup of coffee meeting to be at Starbucks or Coffee Bean or Pete's or other? Um, you know, think about ways to interact with people to show your your creativity, your friendliness, your your ideas about reaching out and connecting. All of this is valuable at any time. And the pandemic, you know, tragic as the whole thing is, it's actually kind of a great time to think about ways to communicate. The pandemic, in addition to being horrific, obviously, it is, in a sense, a communication challenge. And, you know, for those of you who are commercial artists, which is most of you, but even those of you who are gallery artists, we're still all, in one sense or another, communicators. We have careers in sharing ideas. Uh, they tend to be visual and graphic ideas. So, finding ways to connect is why we're here it's what it's why we're here it's what we do so um carry on do great work let me know how i can help see you soon